Hi, this is a short video about indirect questions for Latin GCSE. Now, indirect questions are another form of indirect speech, and unsurprisingly, they are going to report direct questions. Now, they're going to use the subjunctive, so let's have a quick recap of how the subjunctive is formed for GCSE. So, we have our principal parts at the top, paro, parara, per, parawi, paratum, from paro meaning I prepare. We can see from the colour coordination that the imperfect subjunctive is formed from the second principal part. It is our present active infinitive followed by personal endings. Our active personal endings, unsurprisingly for the active, and our passive endings for the passive, for the imperfect passive subjunctive. In the pluperfect, we can see that the in the active, the pluperfect subjunctive is formed from the third principal part. It is essentially our perfect stem plus the letters I, S, S, E, which forms our perfect active infinitive, but then to make the pluperfect subjunctive, we add our active personal endings. In the passive, it's the fourth principal part, plus esse, plus personal endings. Note, however, that they are active personal endings, paratus sem. So, indirect questions, as we said, report a direct question. They are going to be introduced by an above the neck verb. So it's going to be a verb of saying, thinking, believing, uh, now, generally, obviously, an indirect question is going to be something to do with asking. Maybe rogo, I ask, or quiro, I ask. But it, as we'll see later, it can be above a, a, other above-the-neck verbs as well. Now, it's going to use interrogative vocab. For example, in English, if you want to ask a question, you will use a word along the lines of how, who, what, when, where, why, and Latin is exactly the same. It's also, obviously, going to use the subjunctive, both imperfect and pluperfect. So, some examples of interrogative vocab are quiz, uh, meaning kind of who or which, and it's neuter, quid, which means what, uh, quo modo, which means how, quando, when, ubi, where, cur, why, qualis, of what sort, quot, how many, quantus, our um, meaning how big, quo, to where, and under, from where. Now, actually, if you learn the interrogative vocab, that is a big part of indirect questions. And actually, you're most of the way there if you can recognise and correctly translate all of these words. Now, the verb in the indirect question, as we've said, is going to be either imperfect or pluperfect subjunctive. And this is going to be determined by the tense of the original direct question. So if the original question was present tense, we're going to use the imperfect subjunctive in our indirect question. And thus, if the direct question was past tense, we'll use the pluperfect subjunctive. So if we have a look at some examples, hopefully this should help clarify. So quis necata, who is being killed? Necata is present tense, so in our indirect question we can expect the imperfect subjunctive. Servum rogawi quis necarata, there are present active infinitive necare, followed by personal endings, ter. So I ask the slave who was being killed. Quis there is our interrogative vocab, and regawi is our above-the-neck verb. Again, direct question, quid illum consumpsit. Consumpsit there is perfect, past tense, what ate him? And so therefore, in our indirect question, we're going to use the pluperfect subjunctive. Omnes regawimus is our above-the-neck verb, quid, interrogative vocab, illum consumpsisset. We all asked what had eaten him. Because consumpsisset is pluperfect, we need to make sure that we have a had in our English translation. For an indirect question, to which the answer will be yes or no, then num, meaning whether, is used. So, i.e. Latin, for some questions, does not use interrogative vocab in the sense of who, what, when, where, why, how. It might be introduced by ne on the end of a word, which is just going to ask a question that expects either the answer yes or no, or none, which means surely, or num, meaning surely not. Now, when this is turned into an indirect question, num here is going to mean whether instead. So, for example, puerum rogawi num stultus eset. So, I asked the boy whether he was stupid. So, the original direct question was, are you stupid? And so, we are expecting there, in the direct question, either the answer yes or no, either yes, I am stupid, or no, I'm not. And so, in the indirect question, we use num, meaning whether. An indirect question is often used in Latin, even when the direct question is only implied. So we said that above-the-neck verbs commonly used for indirect questions are going to be things like rogo and quiro, but here we might see actually other words being used as well. 
For example, Puer Narawit Quid Fekiset. The boy related, or maybe the boy explained, what he had done. So the original direct question was, what did you do? But that's not, that wasn't necessarily asked. It might only have been implied. The boy might be explaining what he had done without actually ever having been asked. So indirect questions to summarise are nice and straightforward, really. Okay, we have an above the neck verb, interrogative vocab, the meaning of which you must learn, followed by the subjunctive, either imperfect or pluperfect.